going. Hey everybody, it's Valerie. I think today's the 30th, is it? Mm -hmm. All right, I got the date right. Okay, it's March 30th, Monday. We're gonna do a little toucan today. And I thought for a change, I would use um, the more chalky type pastels instead of an oil pastel today. And I just wanted to say that when you buy these, if you buy a better quality, what happens is you have a lot more pigment, which means color, in the stick and not as much binder, meaning like what's holding it together. And the color is way, way better. It holds up to a fixative better, but it is incredibly crumbly and they are really, really expensive. Um, I think you could probably get away, I think these are pro art, um, which is fine, and um, maybe just kind of a mid-range would be great. Um, the other thing is that if you're going to use pastel like this in particular, it's a good idea to get a paper that has a little tooth, which means that it has a little bit of a um, texture to it, a little roughness, and you can buy... Um, like this paper is for pastel and it's not super heavy it's an 80 pound so it's not really really thick but it does have that little tooth and it will hold on to the um, little particles of you know colored dust which is what pastels are another one that I use a lot which you can get I think sometimes at department stores um, you know like maybe Target or something that also has a grocery store and this is great, it's um, 98 pound. This was, the other pastel paper was, like I said, 80. And um, this has a great tooth to it. It also is good if you wanna put water with things. I use this for our acrylic paintings in our classes all the time. Um, when I do adult classes where people are paying a little more money, I use Bristol board, um, which I think is 110. The other thing is, you know, just your basic cardstock. Well, if you're thinking about pound, it's 110 pound. And that has to do with how heavy, how, how thick the paper is. So you know what a cardstock is. That's the heaviest, okay, that, I'm, that I would, you know, and that's sort of what I would use for a Bristol board, which is like vellum and that kind of thing. Um, well, not sheets of vellum, but vellum surface. Okay, and the other thing that you might want is um, a workable fixative. You can, in a pinch, if you're using charcoal or you're using um, this kind of pastel and you don't want it to disappear and you don't have fixative, you can use hairspray, just like your basic Aquanet, okay? That'll work great. Um, the thing about this, workable means that you can spray it down and then you can go back and you can layer on top of that, which is really what you're, you know, every time you do a painting or a drawing and you can put two coats of color or whatever on there it's just gonna be better it's just gonna look better it's just like painting your nails and the second coat always makes it look better right okay all right let's do it let's skip go on from there um, but do if you're gonna use any of this stuff outside outside don't be breathing that if you can help it okay here we're having um, you know snow so you know you're not going to be out there with your paper for very long. Okay. I'm here in Maine. All right, let's do it. Um, the thing with the toucan is we need a really huge beak, okay? Um, to get it all to fit on there, we have to start. We're going to start right here. We have to get it over to the side. We don't want to not have enough room for his face. But do notice that the part of his neck, you know, is overlapping his beak a little bit. And so is this little part on the top of his head. So when you're imagining how you're going to fit that head on there, just realize that, you know, part of it is going to be overlapping down here. But we do want a big, a big piece. This is basically the same size as this, okay? So if I'm going here, that's going to be, my head's going to be about like right here. Okay, I'm going to start with a light green. And I'm, like I said, I'm going to start with this line right here. This, this picture of the bird is tilting his head a little bit like this. Um, you know, you can go ahead and do that if you if you know what you're doing and you're more experienced. It's pretty simple, but I'm not going to bother to like, you know, have everybody do that. We don't we don't. It's not that big of a deal. Okay, 
What we want, this is a straight line right here, and I'm going to make, instead of tilted, I'm going to make it straight up and down. I'm going to go, I don't have much on the top of his head, right? And I have this nice yellow that I want to get in there. So I want to have this, this top of this line go, you know, closer to the top of the page than, say, the middle. And maybe about a third of the way over, okay? And I'm going to make a line that comes down about like this. I'm also going to work in black and white down here if you don't happen to have anything to color with. I mean, even crayons would be fun. I mean, it's so colorful, okay? Um, I'm going to make a spot where I want the end of my beak to be, okay? And it's basically um, even with this, the bottom of this line, but maybe just a teeny weeny bit lower, okay? So I'm going to come over like this, and then just at the end, I'm going to hook it down a little bit, okay? So if you're doing, while you're doing that, um, I will do it down here, same deal. So I'm going to have that line here. I'm going to make a spot over here, just a little bit lower. I'm going to go base, mostly horizontal until just at the end, I'm going to drop that down. It's pretty wide here. So you don't really want to start at the top of the line and just directly go down because that's going to be kind of triangly. How are we doing, Dad? Good. Good? Good? Okay. Hey, everybody. Um, so, but if you can bring this up at a rise a little bit before you start to bring it down, that'll probably, you'll probably like it even better. Okay? All right. So I'm going to do that here. All right. The next thing I'm going to do is mark where the beak opens up, all right? And it's usually on almost everything, whether it's a snout or whether it's a beak, the line that where the upper, mandible, oh, the upper beak and the lower beak are, um, it's closer to the bottom. So it's not right in the middle. It's a little bit lower here, and you're going to go across. Maybe that's a little bit low, but... And then you're going to go down like that, okay? Same thing here. Is Matias watching? Mm -hmm. Hey! Thanks. Thanks for joining me. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is we have this orange piece in here. Okay, it's pretty close to where the beak starts, and it goes kind of up. It's like a big wave, and then it comes down like that. All right? And that's the same thing here. We'll do it here. I'm going to try to do this a little bit lighter because... We're going to have to vary the shades of gray to make this all show up. We have to imagine it's like a black and white photograph. All right? So far, so good? Oh, the other thing is um, to mark where the red part of the beak is going to be. And it has sort of a jig jaggedy edge. Okay? So something like that. All right. And now we're going to go to where the eye is. And he has a pretty good sized eye. Um, and it's outlined, or it's, um, yeah, I guess it's outlined, in, in kind of green. And it's, you can see where it is from this piece, this part of the um, beak. It's pretty close, and it's kind of like right in the middle. But it's pretty good size, so don't make it too little. Okay, we'll go around like that. I think now, yeah, we'll do that. Maybe I'll smudge that in there. And... Okay, now I want to draw in the outside where the black's going to go and where the yellow is going to go here. Don't worry, we'll cover up. We'll cover up to get, you know, the green. All right? Let's do this piece right down here. So you're going to go in just a little bit and basically just bring this down to the bottom. Okay? So where am I here? And here I need my eye. And then I'm going to bring my beak in. Have I done the same thing on both? Yeah. Okay. All right, then this part of his forehead, it doesn't start here at the t this corner. It starts in a little bit, but it doesn't go way up. He doesn't have a big pointy head or anything. So it just kind of goes over, and then hopefully you can start to get it to go down a little bit. Okay? Um, yeah, and then we'll leave it at that for now. And while I've got my green, oops, let me do it down here. Okay. While I have my green, I'm going to go ahead and color this in. All right. And so with the black and white, I've kind of got to decide whether 
I think the orange or the green is darker. And if I squint, I guess I would say that the orange is a little bit lighter. So I'm going to color this in. Um, all right, that's. And I maybe use my. Oh, it's right in my hand. Maybe use my eraser to smudge this so I don't get black, because I'll get black all over the color picture too if I use my fingers on that. Which would be a classic move on my part. Oh, so before I forget, it occurred to me that maybe some people don't want to make a comment or like the pose because they are, feel like they should pay and that I might be judgy if I know you're watching and you're not paying. And I just mm -hmm. want to let you know that 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 doesn't matter to me at all. Okay, so I would rather know that you're watching than, than to make you feel like you have to pay. Okay, all right, let's not say anything more about that. All right, um, the next thing we're gonna do is get the yellow. Okay, that was, you know, cheer us up. Okay, so that starts just below where that part meets goes <sighs> goes down. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> Some things never change. Sorry about that, <laughs> people out there. Okay. You don't want me to be sad. Tell me that you're watching. <laughs> don't keep it a secret. All right. And, and if you do want to make a donation, you can do it on my, <laughs> on my website, ValerieWallsFineArts.com. And there's a ticket page, and you can do it there. For as little as a dollar. Just like, just give me a little nod. All right, nice yellow there. I'm gonna put some yellow on the top of my beak here. I'm also gonna just drag that down here where I'm gonna go red too, just because it'll blend in there. Um, all right, so color that in, and I will do a little, so I'm gonna wanna keep this, this yellow on the, this one pretty light. I might smudge it a little bit, but I don't want it to get it too dark. Why does it look blue? Does it look blue to you? Does it? No. Um, no. No? Oh! Oh, it looks like Why am I? Oh, you know what it is? This is a great um, discussion in color because my charcoal is slightly bluish black versus maybe being greenish black or brownish black kind of like mascara um and the yellow is what getting in the way Sp spreading down falling all over this picture and so the blue the bluish charcoal is mixing with the yellow and making it look greenish or bluish i don't know maybe that doesn't make any sense okay all right, so let's do the orange on here. I'm gonna pick kind of a light orange to use on this part. Um, all right, like that. All these nice colors. And down here, I think, oh, oh that's a problem. Oh, well. It's gonna have a little orange feel to it. Let's see if I smudge that, it'll be a little bit different color. I might have to erase it a little bit. Okay. I know we wanna put that black in there, we wanna put the red in there, but we want to have his beak have a nice point to it. So I wanna do the background before we, and we don't want the black, even if you're using, cup, well, maybe if you're using crayons, it wouldn't spread, but it's going to spread most likely into your background colors and, and we don't wanna mess them all up. So we're gonna put the black on last. We'll also put the red on after we do the background because that'll just help us to make that beak nice and sharp. Okay, so pick what you want for the background. I am not gonna use green because there's green all over this picture and that doesn't really give me a great color contrast. Um, sometimes when I do this as a painting, we use some dull color, some you know grays and browns because then you have the contrast of the beak being you know the bright colors and then they have the dark colors in the background or the dull colors and that makes a nice um, contrast of 
I guess hue or whatever. But I like um, this color, so I'm gonna paint that chart that color. That's my favorite. So if you haven't figured that out yet, this is even more my favorite. Okay, I'm gonna take two shades, and where the the pit, where the toucan is the lightest, I'm gonna put a little bit of the darker blue next to that. So I'm gonna have a little contrast of value. And then where it's darkest, meaning maybe on the black side, maybe out on the beak side, I'm gonna put more of the lighter blue. All right, I may have to touch it up after, after we do the other parts, but. So right in here, I'm gonna bring this in. You pick whatever color you like. It's fun to see how the colors look against all sorts of different things. All right. Now, um, how are we doing, Dad? Looks good. So far, so good. Yep. Well, it's not it's going to take very long. But how much fun, huh? Awesome. So much. So much. Okay. There we go. Do a little of that. And then I'm gonna take my lighter one. And you can see now how that tooth is on there, that little bit of texture, which keeps it kind of fresh with a little bit of that light showing through underneath. It's hard to get these things, especially if they're relatively inexpensive, to stick to um, a piece of coffee paper. Oh, the other thing was um, it, uh, some construction paper actually has a great, you know, it's very, I guess, porous or something, but it absorbs the color pretty nicely. So that's, a, if you have a construction paper around, try that with some of your drawings. It, I think you'll be, it's always great too to, to draw on um, a colored piece of paper and use it as your background or put another color over it. So I'll probably be doing that. So you can get, rustle up some either colored cardstock or just, you know, colored coffee paper or um, even better, probably colored um, construction paper. Or, um, you know, maybe you have paper that you've had around and you're saving it. You want to do something really special with your special paper and now's the time. Now's the time to do something special with all your special art stuff you've had around the house. Don't do what I do. I got like markers, this incredible pack of Sharpie markers about, mm, I don't know, 10 years ago or something when my kids were younger and they couldn't touch them. There was just no way you were not allowed to touch my Sharpies. And then, and they, I, I, I think I might have caught Daphne with her hands on one time and like got in trouble, you know, she got in trouble for it. And then the next thing I knew, they're dried up. They were like all dried up. <laughs> so I was like, okay, too late. So classic, don't be that kind of uh, art person and like save all your stuff for something really, really magnificent. You never know when something magnificent is going to happen. Use decent, you don't need to have, I mean, you have to use the best quality stuff out there but decent, and a decent piece of paper is probably your number one thing to invest in. And, and this, this is just over maybe 10 bucks, and there's 60 sheets of paper in it. So it's a really great thing, and you can get a smaller one too. You know, we're working more eight and a half by 11, that's 11 by 14. But I think if you're using big sticks like this, I mean, in general, I would use a bigger piece of paper because um, they're just hard to maneuver on a smaller one. But but you know, whatever works for you. And I, and I do think that you can get um, curbside service if you're in the right area, um, places like Michael's um, are doing that. If you can just check online and see if there's a place near you. I think in Maine, there's one in Augusta that's doing that. Okay, let's do the red. I'm gonna use this, um, this cooler red, I guess. I'm not worried too much about the shadows in this one. I'm not gonna overdo on that stuff. So. And this, I want to go over my green line. I'm not looking for it to be outlined in green. Let's see if I can get my pinky in there. Smudge that in. Okay. But again, I want it to be nice and sharp. This is important. I mean, what's the toucan about if it's really not about the beak? I mean, I don't know. Okay. Hey, Veronica. Hey, Ruby. 
Who else is watching? Anybody? Arlene? Is Arlene mm. with me today? I don't see. Mm. Okay, Daphne's gonna tell me if you're there. So let me know. Okay. <laughs> you don't have to pay. <laughs> okay. Other thing I wanna do is are these little marks, so don't let me forget that. But I'm gonna go ahead and do this part on the black. Let's do the eye. So if you can, leave yourself a little bit of white, and that will be nice to have that little highlight in there. And it's one thing, it's great when you're painting because you can just add it on there at the very, very end with the back of your paintbrush, but we're not doing that. I might take my little, uh, a Q-tip would work too, but I'm gonna take my little paper stub here and smudge this in because I want it to be very black. All right. Oops, did I not do anything down here? I've been skipping this part. <laughs> okay, I'll do it quick. Okay, so my beak is going to be... Um, all right, so yeah, I would be doing this darker here. I'll just do a little bit. And I'll get lighter over here. Darker here. Lighter here. Lighter here. There we go. Don't want to forget about the black and white. Something very beautiful about a charcoal drawing or... Well, I'm not going to say pencil drawing because I don't really think so, but... Get something else. Get a even a black crayon, so you can get some black there. Don't be don't be afraid. Okay. Um, the eye and I need this. Let's see, darker. It's gonna be a little dark. So it's dark like that. I'll take my eraser, maybe lighten that just a little bit, and then what I'm gonna do is lighten the outside. What? Matias is doing a pencil drawing. Matias, if you can paint the way you can paint, don't don't make a pencil drawing. Next time. Okay. A pencil drawing on purpose of a toucan. I mean, I get it if it's like a, you know, like a bare tree or something, but I don't know. He's probably lost his anonymity at this point. Okay. All right, let's do it. Um, black. Let's do this part. We have this nice, I guess he's okay if he admits it. We would never know otherwise, right? Um, when you're doing the... This line here, if you make it a little bit where you brush your whatever you're drawing with out and have a, have a little bit of wisp to it, it's kind of like when we do the grass, it will look a little bit feathery, depending, you know, it's like, because you know, it's a little bit rough on the top. All right. Color this in. We'll do the little marks on the beak. And that'll be it for today. And we will and then I'll try to figure out what we're gonna do tomorrow. Alright. Okay. So remember, if you know somebody that wants to watch and they 
um, you know, are busy at one, you can always see them on my Facebook page and you can also get them on um, YouTube, free drawing classes with Valerie Wallace, Fine Arts playlist and you can get them all right there and um, that's an easy way to look at and then you can and you can also see the picture so you'll know if it's something you're you're interested in drawing. All right, so the last thing, I'm gonna use purple, and I'm gonna start here. It do, the line that's here, I mean, it's, there's not really a line, it's very faint here. I'm gonna put a little bit here on top of this green, and then I'm gonna let it kind of fade, because we don't really need it. Um, maybe bring a little, blend that in there like that. Purple is a great way to use a sh for a shadow of red. I could blend that in the bottom a little bit. Okay? Um, it, it had, they're different. The one thing I want you to notice is that there, some of them are kind of dark, but some of them are pretty faded. So if you can vary how, how strongly you push down, it'll look a little bit more like this. But it's just a nice little thing to have at the end. Okay? Same deal down here. Okay. They're all a little different. I've seen a lot of different pictures, and some of them are um, big triangles. Sometimes they're very faint. I'm sure there's a reason how it works, but I don't know what it is. Oops, I guess that's not going to show. So if I want to make them show, do erase this a little bit. Okay, as easy as that. All right, did I forget anything? No. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow at one o'clock. Thank you very much.